Do you know what this is? This is the Daredeo Dreadnought, often considered one of the fugliest dreadnoughts Games Workshop has ever made. I mean, it's got nothing on the Fury Bundus, but nobody even counts that one anyway. Whenever I get into conversations about dreadnoughts, the Daredeo often receives a lot of negativity. And sometimes from me too, because I kind of agree, it's sort of an ugly model. It's got some wonk in the bonk, let's just say. But I want one. I am a dreadnought connoisseur, and I want a Daredeo in the collection. So I am going to put this together, and my Daredeo is going to be unquestionably cool, objectively cool. And the way I'm gonna do that is through kit bashing. Now I know Forge Old's a ripoff. The resin is half the quality of Games Workshop plastic for twice the price, but it has been a hot second since I've unboxed a Forge Old item and I'm kind of excited. There is something to Forge World, or maybe there used to be back in the Dizay, like a decade ago. It was a badge of honor to have one fancy Forge World unit sitting in the center of your completed four to 5,000 point army. It was dessert. It was a special treat because you are the Dark Eldar guy. You are the Space Marine guy. Nowadays though, things are just different, especially here in the USA. Years ago, you had to special order Forge World from the UK and wait for it to cross the ocean. Nowadays, though, it just ships from the U.S. warehouse in Memphis, Tennessee, and we pay 20% extra for the privilege. Having looked through all these parts, I can say that it's, for the most part, fine. Which is kind of terrible. For the price I paid for this thing, I would hope it would be immaculate. I've bought a ton of resin from other companies, and it's usually 10s out of 10s for less money, where every single one of these pieces is probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 in terms of casting quality. The only big problems I ran into was these barrels have a pretty good lean to them. One of these little shin armors is missing a rivet and there's a big old bubble where that rivet should be. And I really hope that they retired the mold after they cast my gun belt ammo feed things because there's a big chunk of silicone in there. And if they use this mold again, the next person's little chain is gonna be really messed up. All in all, it's fine. Time to get to work. Step one is washing all the parts, because they have an oily mold release chemical on them that will stop the primer from sticking properly. I threw all the parts into my ultrasonic cleaner. I had to cut off the excess resin so it could all fit into my incredibly cheap tiny cleaner. Then I poured in one parts LA Totally Awesome to three parts water. Don't use alcohol for this, it can soften the resin. Now the real work begins. Games Workshop plastics are basically perfect right off the sprue, but on these Forge World resin pieces, I have to do a lot of cleaning up. Carving away excess resin, sanding. I think this is part of why there's still a mystique to Forge World. It's actually impressive to see someone get one of these things built. The gun barrels still need to be drilled the old fashioned way. And speaking of barrels, Forge World connected these with a strip of resin. Probably a good idea for casting, but it was a pain in the butt to get rid of. I cleaned up the weapon options that come in this kit and it made me wonder, heavy bolter or heavy flamer? It's, ah, the heavy flamer is so, so cool and a very powerful weapon but it's close range. I really don't see this Derrideo ever getting charged or needing a weapon like the Heavy Flamer. The Heavy Bolter is not that good, but at least it can actually reach out to the sort of ranges that I'm gonna be typically shooting with the Derrideo. I could magnetize it and have both options, but really I feel like I don't need to. This Heavy Flamer is probably never gonna get used, so I'm gonna take these bits and put them in my bit spins and I'm gonna start gluing things together. The hilariously big missile launchers actually can freely swivel if you glue them down just right. Unlike the normal dreads, the smokestacks are horizontal to make room for the top gun. Some actual engineering went into this dread, very unusual for the 40K universe. The guns went together nicely. I really like that the Derrideo actually has ammo boxes that look like they can hold more than five bullets. And of course, his little noggin. This dreadnought has a tiny body. There must be nothing left of the original pilot to actually fit in there. The Derrideo, or Dorito Dreadnought, is constructed, and comparing it to a classic box dread, it is very different. It's quite a bit taller, and it's also decently well proportioned to a human frame. And that actually is what sets it apart from the normal Dreadnoughts, because normal Dreadnoughts are coffins on legs. They are weird, silly looking things, where the Derrideo is actually a lot more humanoid, and looks pretty darn good until I attach the hilariously huge guns. Now, I do love how redonkulously big these guns are, but it does really, really highlight how tiny those legs are. And I think that the legs are gonna be how I am going to fix or alter this dreadnought 
to be extra awesome. And the way I'm gonna do that is with the Sentinel kit. This is the new Sentinel from Games Workshop, and what I need out of this box is the legs. I think just the Sentinel legs would actually look pretty good on their own, but I think I can modify the Dreadnought's legs into the Sentinel's legs and get the best of both worlds. And use as much expensive Forge World resin as possible. Now from all the way over here, I can hear you all wondering, Jay, did you buy a $45 Sentinel just to kitbash part of its foot into the Dreadnought? And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna try to use as much of the Sentinel as I possibly can, but, um, yeah, it feels a little sillier now than it did when I was ordering the parts. First, I cut away the peg that helps you pose the Sentinel. Then I had to cut away almost all of the ankle so that I could slide the resin joint onto it. This was really hard to do, but working slowly and carefully, I made it happen. I cut away the old leg joint. This felt wrong destroying that much forge roll detail, but I had to do it. I drilled some holes for the Sentinel's hydraulics and shocks. Then I stuck the new leg into place. I put green stuff into the leg to make it taller, because now the leg sits at a weird angle from the foot, because of the chicken stance of the walker. And I had to glue the knee on upside down because of the new leg. I glued the new legs onto his butt, then threw on the torso, and it looks really different now. The Derrideo now has some funky fresh legs. Putting it alongside the classic box dread, it now towers over it, and it's so interesting. Those new legs are a good counterpoint and counterbalance to the humongous guns. Those legs look like they can actually withstand the crazy recoil of the auto cannons, as opposed to the old kind of stumpy legs that uh, looked like it might fall over if it fired just a little bit too fast. Now I gotta fill up that base with stuff, and it's an 80 millimeter base, so there's lots and lots of room to play around with. I went back to the original Sentinel sprue. I used up the legs, so now it's time to do something with that head. And of course, old Games Workshop put a stop to my fun. So I was hoping that I could use up the rest of this Sentinel to have it dead on the ground with a bunch of auto cannon holes in it. But it turns out the new Sentinel kit is probably about 25% bigger than the old Sentinel. It is huge. It's way too big to put on this base, so I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do with you, and I'm gonna have to figure out something for this base. I went back to my tried and true Black Templar base trick, Pine Bark Nuggets. I hot glued these downs into spots that wouldn't interfere with the big feet of this dread. And a big feet, you know what that means. Big auto cannons. And I put some milliput to soften the transition from the wood to the base. I covered the ground in wood glue and then sprinkled on some sand and pebbles. It's not the most amazing base that I had in my head, but it's still good and it'll match the rest of my army nicely. Now it was time for assembly. I had to soften up the gun so that they would fit properly onto the body. I used hot water for this. This is pretty tricky to do. For anybody else out there building a Derrideo Dreadnought with the Anvilus Auto Cannons, uh, definitely glue the belts on last, or else you have to do a lot of tinkering. This big boy was ready. It is finally time to paint this sucker up, and I am a little bit nervous, because I am bad at painting vehicles. When I look at my old Dreadnoughts, they're fine, but they're kind of just gray boxes. I think the thing that really saves them is all the fancy little decorations, where the armor is pretty drab. But on the Derrideo, there's like no decorations. It's all armor, so I really gotta get the armor singing. And so what I think I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna use the recipe for my Black Templar troopers and try that on the vehicle. I primed this sucker black, zenithaled it white, then I base coated the metal. I made up a gray metal by mixing gray with silver paint. This will let me push my contrast as much as I want while still getting a little bit of the metallic glitter. Then it was time for my patented Black Templar armor recipe. I used Leviathan Blue, Black Templar, and Lamian Median. You can see how I use this in a PDF paint guide over on our Patreon, and that's not all you'll find. Over there, we have a brand new terrain set every month. This month, we have the Starship Bridge, a modular grimdark spaceship interior complete with stained glass windows. This set is available for the month of March and is all hosted through comics, games, and things. On our Patreon, you can also watch extra episodes of EOB, join live Discord hangouts, and get your name on a Space Marine. I applied this mix all over the armor. I used a huge brush for this because Games Workshop contrast dries really fast. I want to make sure I get every part covered while it's still wet. Otherwise, I would get coffee staining. You would see the edge where the last layer of paint already dried. I used a few extra coats of paint here and there to darken some of the armor. And then I mixed up a matching gray paint using the Leviathan blue and white paint, and I used this to highlight and clean up some of the patchiness of the contrast paint. I did lots and lots of highlighting and some edge highlighting with a light gray. I think it looks really nice, although some might disagree. That is some black armor. And I know what you're all thinking. It's blue. And it's, it is blue. It's objectively blue. But I don't really care, because black armor is impossible. If I just left it primed black, it would be black, but 
it wouldn't have any contrast. And contrast is what gives a model pop. It's what gives it energy. It's what makes it jump out on the gaming table. So I'm willing to leave a little bit of that behind and introduce a little bit of color and value and contrast to make my miniatures a little bit more interesting. And speaking of contrast, it's time to add that to the metal. I mix some silver into the white paint to make a highlight for the metal of this dreadnought, and I used it to highlight exactly like I did the armor, but it didn't do as good a job, and that was on purpose. I didn't need to, because after this step I applied a black wash right over top, and it won't matter that you can see right where the highlights start and stop, because the black wash will blend it all together. Almost everything is done now, but I want to do something crazy. The belly of this Derrideo is my favorite thing on this model. I love it, I love how the paint turned out on it, and now... I want to paint a checkerboard on it. This might lead to disaster, or it might look really cool. Probably disaster though, I better be careful. I have painted a lot of checkers in my day, mostly on orcs. Usually on flat surfaces, and for orcs they don't have to be perfect, but here it does. I went really, really slowly with very thin paint, sketching out my squares and then filling them in. I want yellow checkers. Maybe if I get a second one, I'll do red. They would look great as a pair. Once I had the squares blocked in, pun intended, I filled them in, using an orange around the edges where the paint should be darker and a white yellow around the head where it should be lighter. Whew, the checkers are done. It took about two hours to do just the checkers. Does look pretty schnazzy though. I'm gonna have to do something to really Black Templars it up. And I'm thinking decals. I love decals, and the new Black Templar decal sheet comes with a variety of shapes and sizes. I put a little one right on his dome. That way he matches my intercessors. I put some bigger symbols on the legs, some little shield symbols on the guns, and some big honkin' Templar symbols on the two missile pods. Now the rest of the model is very painterly, and the decals are very perfect. So I used some tan paint and black paint to blend them into the model better. Then came the eyes. I filled them with the red fires of Sigismund's Fury, meaning Evil Sun Scarlet. For the base, I airbrushed on some Vallejo Earth, then dry brushed with Vallejo Stonewall Gray, a few little squirts of burnt umber, a sapia wash, and a little more dry brushing to finish it off. Now, you're probably wondering what makes this dreadnought different from the classic box dread and contemptor dreadnoughts that are the more typical stompy androids you see on the tabletop. Well, it has four extra wounds, 12 instead of eight, a five up and vulnerable save, and it foregoes any close combat weapon slot to max out on shooting potential. And it's shooting out 18 decent shots a turn, mostly damage too at 36 inch range, and it can reach out to 48 with most of its guns. It's not completely unique in that stat line, but it probably is the funkiest unit with that kind of a weapon loadout. And that's really the point. Sure, I could take a gladiator lancer tank or a predator annihilator and probably throw similar dice, but I want the double take. I want my opponents absolutely confused when this lanky weirdo with guns bigger than he is marches onto the board. I finally have a Doritos Locos Dreadnought for the collection. Thanks for watching.